My name's Anna. I sell houses, the big fancy ones with views, and the small cozy types that feel like yesterday's bread, warm and welcoming. My office is way up in the sky, or so it feels on the 22nd floor. It's a world of glass that reflects everything, the clouds, the birds, and the infinite hustle of the city. So, here's where it all starts. There's this guy, Mike. Not just any guy. The type that walks into a room and even the air takes notice. He started working at the firm next door about a year ago. The first time we met was by the coffee machine. It's one of those fancy ones that can do everything except drink the coffee for you. I was fighting with the machine, trying to get it to give me something strong enough to keep my eyelids from staging a protest. Need a hand? That was Mike. Smiling, like he knew the secret joke behind every little malfunction. Yeah, unless you know how to negotiate with a robot, I snapped back, more out of caffeine deprivation than any real annoyance. He laughed, that easy kind of laugh that's infectious. Let me try. These things are more sensitive than my mom's chihuahua. He fiddled a bit, pushed some buttons like he was playing an arcade game, and voila, the machine surrendered two cups of the darkest brew. Mike, he said, handing me one. Anna. Thanks. I replied, taking a sip. Heaven in a cup and just the jolt I needed. We started bumping into each other more. Coffee breaks turned into little chats about this and that. He was easy to talk to. He had a way of listening that made you want to tell him stuff you'd think was duller than watching paint dry. One day, we grabbed lunch together at a little cafe just a block away from our buildings. It was becoming a thing, us, talking. About work, movies, the mess of the world. You ever think about doing something else? Like, not selling houses? He asked once, picking at a sandwich like it was a puzzle. Nah, I shrugged. It's in my blood. Plus, I get a kick out of making people's dreams come true. What about you? Ever think of running away and joining the circus? He chuckled, shaking his head. Can't. My mom would miss me too much. There it was. Mike was a mama's boy. Not in a living in her basement playing video games way, but close. He lived with her, took care of her. Hell, she even came to his office sometimes, like she was checking in on her investment. I thought it was sweet. A bit odd, maybe, but sweet. I liked that he cared so much. It was rare. Life at the office and with Mike was like rolling with a fast current, and before I knew it, a year had whisked by. The casual lunches and coffee breaks had woven into something a lot tighter, a lot more serious. One Friday, the office was buzzing more than usual. Word gets around when something's up, and around here, it spreads faster than a wildfire. I was plugging away at my desk when Liz, a co-worker from two cubicles down, strutted over like she had some hot gossip. Hey, Anna, everyone's saying he's gonna pop the question soon. You know, a ring, the whole shebang. She smirked, popping her gum. Let him talk, I shrugged, trying to brush it off, but my heart was racing. Mike hadn't hinted anything, but the thought sent a zing through my spine. Later that day, as the sun dipped below the horizon painting the sky in strokes of orange and purple, Mike suggested we grab dinner instead of just a quick bite at the cafe. Something about the way he said it, all nervous-like, had my stomach doing somersaults. We ended up at this cozy little Italian place he knew, tucked away from the usual hustle of the city. It was the kind of spot you'd miss if you weren't looking for it, with dim lighting and candles flickering on the tables. The conversation flowed easy, but I could tell Mike was edgy. He fumbled with his napkin, cleared his throat more times than needed, and kept avoiding eye contact. So, Anna, he finally started, his voice a bit shaky. We've been doing this, us, for a while now, and I... Spit it out, Mike. You're killing me here, I cut in, half joking, half dying inside. He chuckled, that nervous sort of laugh that didn't reach his eyes. Then, he took a deep breath, reached into his pocket, and slid a small box across the table towards me. I want to do this for real, Anna. Marry me? The room spun a little. I mean, Liz's teasing, the office bets, suddenly, it was all real. 
but looking into Mike's hopeful eyes, I felt the solid, sure thing settle in my chest. Yeah, Mike. Yes, I managed, my boy steadier than I felt. He grinned, relief washing over his face, and slipped the ring on my finger. It was simple, nothing too flashy, just like us. We spent the rest of the evening wrapped up in our little bubble, the chatter around us fading into a blur. The next week at work was like walking onto a stage. Heads turned, whispers followed me down the hall, and even the old-timers slapped Mike on the back and threw him knowing looks. And amid all the congratulations and cheeky comments, the bets came up again. Liz, with her big mouth, couldn't help herself. Gotta say, Anna, didn't think you'd say yes. What's the over-under on this lasting then? She laughed, nudging me. I rolled my eyes. Place your bets, Liz. But we're in this for the long haul. Hear that, folks? She's confident. Might want to reconsider your stakes. Liz announced to the room, which earned a round of laughter and more playful bets. But it was all noise. In that whirlwind of a moment, with a new ring on my finger and Mike by my side, the office could have fallen down around us, and I wouldn't have cared. We were doing this, and that's all that mattered. Our wedding was nothing fancy, just close friends and family in a small garden downtown. It was perfect, simple, intimate, and just about us. However, the real challenge started when we were supposed to set up our new life together. As we were packing up my apartment, Mike dropped the bomb. Anna, I've been thinking. Mom and I have been living alone in this rented house since Dad passed. She won't feel good alone without me. What do you think about moving in with her? It could save us a ton on rent and bills. I sighed. It wasn't what I wanted, but how could I say no? He was right, his mom had been alone a lot. Okay, let's give it a try, I conceded, trying to sound more upbeat than I felt. Moving day was a blur. His mom, Martha, welcomed us with open arms and an endless list of how things were done in her house. At first, it was fine. I thought, I can handle this. It's temporary. But as days turned into weeks, the true colors of living under Martha's roof began to show. She had rules for everything, from how laundry should be done to how the groceries should be stored. One evening, we were setting the table for dinner when she cornered me in the kitchen. Anna, you need to start taking more responsibility around here. It's tradition for the daughter-in-law to handle the household, she stated firmly, her eyes pinning me in place. I was chopping vegetables, my hand stilling for a moment. Martha, I work full-time, just like Mike. I'm happy to help, but we should split the chores equally. Mike walked in just then, and I looked to him for support. He was silent for a moment, then shrugged. Mom's got a point, Anna. It's how she's always done things. Can't we just try it her way? His words stung. I felt betrayed. How could he not see how unfair this was? Six months in, the situation hadn't improved. If anything, it got worse. Martha started talking about moving to a bigger, more modern house. Anna, you're in real estate. Start looking for something nice for us, a place where we can all live comfortably, she'd say, flipping through house listings. I tried to explain as gently as I could. Martha, we really can't afford a new house right now. It's not just about finding a place, it's about being able to maintain it financially. She would wave off my concerns. Nonsense. You'll find a good deal. You're good at your job, aren't you? The pressure was mounting, and I felt trapped. I remembered the office bets about how long my marriage would last. It seemed everyone expected it to crumble. Determined not to give them that satisfaction, I gritted my teeth and bore it, hoping for a change. Just when I thought things couldn't get more chaotic, Mike's sister, Jen, showed up at our doorstep, tears streaming down her face, a toddler on her hip. The door barely swung open before she was halfway through it, her voice cracking with panic. He kicked me out, Mike. He's done with me, said I cheated, which I didn't. She sobbed, collapsing into the hallway. Mike, ever the family man, wrapped an arm around her, guiding her to the living room. It's okay, Jen. You can stay here as long as you need, he assured her. 
I stood there, mouth slightly open, trying to process another bombshell. As they settled down, I pulled Mike aside, my voice low. Mike, this house is already packed. Maybe it's time we found our own place? He shook his head, his brows knitting together. Anna, come on, this is temporary. Just until Jen gets back on her feet. We can handle this. Handle this? It was like every day added another weight I wasn't sure I could carry. But I nodded, resigning myself to the new reality. The next weeks were a blur of chaos. Jen, bless her, was dealing with a lot, but that meant all her responsibilities fell to me. I'd come home from a long day at work, to a house turned upside down, by her two-year-old whirlwind, Tommy. Toys everywhere, food splatters on the walls, you name it, Tommy did it. It felt like no matter what I did, it was never enough. The final straw came at dinner a few nights later. We were all sitting around the table, a tense silence hanging over us as we picked at our food. That's when Martha, with her usual flair for stirring the pot, dropped her next idea. You know, Anna, you're out working all day, and clearly, the house is suffering for it. My friend's daughter, Lisa, she's looking for a job as an au pair. Maybe you should hire her to help out. She suggested, like she was doing me a favor. Yeah? And who's paying for this au pair? I asked, my voice sharper than I intended. Martha smiled, a thin, knowing smile. Well, you are, of course. You're the one with the job. I glanced at Mike, hoping for some support, but he just focused on his plate, silent. Something inside me snapped. Fine, if hiring this girl meant less time at this madhouse, then so be it. All right, Martha. Have her come by tomorrow. We'll talk. I conceded, pushing my plate away, appetite gone. Lisa started the next day. She was a sweet girl, early twenties, and good with Tommy, which was a relief. She cooked, she cleaned, and the house seemed calmer. But it wasn't long before I noticed the giggles, the lingering look she shared with Mike when she thought I wasn't looking. One night, after I saw her touch his arm, laughing at something he said, I confronted him. Do you think it's appropriate, the way Lisa acts around you? I asked, my voice tight. Mike just chuckled, waving my concerns away like they were flies. Anna, you're being ridiculous. She's just a kid, and I've known her since she was in diapers. Don't be jealous. Jealous? Was I? Or was it just the final wear down of living in a house where I felt more like an outsider than a family member? I shook my head, trying to push away the nagging doubts. All right, Mike. If you say so, I replied, but the seed of unease had already been planted. Living in a crowded house with your in-laws is like walking on eggshells, you never know which step will crack. But worse than the thin ice was the creeping realization that things were amiss. At first, it was a 20 here, a 50 there. Small change, maybe misplaced. Then it was earrings, a bracelet my grandma gave me. That kind of stuff doesn't just walk away. One evening, after noticing my favorite watch was gone, I confronted Lisa, the au pair. Lisa, have you seen a silver watch around? It's missing. She gave me a wide-eyed innocent look. Oh no, Anna, I haven't seen anything. Maybe it's lost? Enough was enough. I installed hidden cameras in my room, a desperate move for desperate times. I wasn't going to accuse anyone without proof but what I found blew the lid off any petty theft. It was a Wednesday, the kind of day where you just can't face going home. I sat in a cafe, laptop open, pretending to work, but really, I was watching the live feed from the camera. What I saw crushed me. Jen, Mike's sister, snuck into our room. She went straight for the drawer where I kept my jewelry, her movements too practiced. My heart sank. Then, the door opened again, it was Mike and Lisa. They weren't just chatting. No, they were, together. On our bed. It felt like a punch to the gut. I sat there, the taste of my coffee turning bitter. Anger boiled up, but a cold, calculating part of me pushed it down. No, I wasn't going to storm home. I needed a plan. Over the next few days, I collected every shred of evidence. 
videos, times, everything. But revenge? That needed to be sweet, not hasty. One day, accidentally leaving my laptop open on a real estate listing was part of the play. It was a beautiful house, big yard, underpriced by half. Mike walked by, stopped, and stared at the screen. What's this, he asked, eyes lighting up. Oh, just some listing I found. Too bad we're not looking, huh? I murmured, feigning disinterest. He grabbed the laptop, scrolling through the photos. Are you kidding? This is perfect. Why wouldn't we look at this? Martha came over, peering over his shoulder. Oh, Mike. It's beautiful. Call them, now. Mike was practically bouncing as he dialed the number. Hi, yes, I'm calling about the listing. Yes, we want to put down a deposit. No, no need for a full check, we trust it's all good, he said, all but throwing our money at them. Who's it going to be registered to? I asked, my voice sweet as syrup. Me, obviously. And you'll help with the payments, right? He didn't even look at me as he spoke. Of course, I replied, my smile hiding daggers. Everything was falling into place. Sitting back, I watched as they celebrated, oblivious to the storm that was about to hit. Mike, Martha, and Jen, they all thought they had won. But the game had just changed, and I was now playing for keeps. The ink was barely dry on the documents for the new house when Mike decided to throw a dinner that felt more like a victory lap than a family gathering. The entire crew was there, his mom, Martha, his sister, Jen, and yes, Lisa, who'd become too familiar in all the wrong ways. The dining room buzzed with a kind of giddy tension as I walked in, the air thick with smug satisfaction. Mike was grinning like a kid who'd just gotten away with stealing cookies. All right, everyone, big news, Mike announced, standing at the head of the table with a glass of wine in hand. We're moving into the new house next week. Mom, Jen, and, of course, Lisa here will be coming with me. Anna and I, well, Anna won't be joining us. Martha clapped her hands, almost bouncing in her chair. Here are the divorce papers. I think Lisa suits my son better. You should leave here, right now. I took the envelope without a word, my hand steady as I pulled out the papers. I looked around the table, at their expectant faces, waiting for me to break, to make a scene. But I didn't give them the satisfaction. Instead, I signed each page, each signature a silent seal on my exit from this twisted soap opera. I stood up, my chair scraping back loudly in the quiet that followed. Enjoy the house, I said, my tone even, a small smile playing on my lips. I walked out with my head held high, their laughter echoing behind me. They thought they'd won, but the game was far from over. A week after I'd moved out, living in a small but peaceful apartment, I got a call from Sarah, a friend who lived near the new dream home. Hey, you won't believe what's happening, Sarah's voice was a mix of concern and disbelief. Your ex and a circus moved into the house, and now there's a major stink, literally. The whole neighborhood is complaining. Oh? What's going on? I asked, a knowing smile creeping across my face. It's the sewage, Anna. Something's wrong with their pipes, sewage is leaking out onto the street. It's a disaster. They've had plumbers in all day. The news was a delicious twist I hadn't anticipated so soon. They're in deep, you know. Mike's trying to sort it, but he's out of his depth. No money to fix it properly. Sarah continued, her voice almost sympathetic. As I hung up, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. The perfect house, the perfect scam. The victory they thought they had was crumbling, just like the pipes in their precious new home. And as for me? I was finally free, breathing air that smelled a lot sweeter than the one surrounding them. After signing those divorce papers, it wasn't just a matter of packing up my old life, but gearing up for a battle. First thing, I met with a lawyer, Mr. Davidson, a no-nonsense guy with a reputation for being a bulldog in court. I laid out everything, hidden camera footage, dates, times, the works. Mr. Davidson, scanning through the evidence with keen eyes, finally looked up, his expression grim yet oddly satisfied. Anna, we have a solid case here. 
infidelity, theft, you want to go to court, you'll likely seek compensation. That's exactly what I want, I told him, my voice steady, my resolve like steel. We filed for financial compensation for the betrayal and initiated a police complaint against Jen for theft. The days that followed were a blur of legal documents, meetings, and statements. Amidst this whirlwind, word got out about the divorce and everything else. I braced for whispers, for pity, or worse, mockery at work. But it never came. Instead, there was an unexpected wave of support. But not everyone was supportive. One afternoon, as I was walking out of a meeting, I saw her, Martha, storming into the office like it was her own house, fury radiating off her in waves. Anna, you think you can just destroy my family and get away with it? She screamed across the lobby. The office fell silent. Everyone's eyes were on us. I stood my ground. Martha, you need to leave. Now. She took a step forward, her finger pointed accusingly. I won't let you do this to us. Before she could continue, I gestured to the security guards. Please escort her out. She's not welcome here. The guards were quick to react, taking Martha by the arms and leading her away as she continued to shout and struggle. It was a sad, desperate scene. The following weeks saw the legal battles unfold. Mike, faced with undeniable evidence, settled out of court, agreeing to a lump sum as compensation. His face, when he signed the papers, was a mix of anger and humiliation. Jen, caught red-handed on video, received a conditional sentence and was ordered to return all stolen items. Adding to their downfall, Mike became a joke at work. People would suddenly lift their noses as he passed, snickering about the man from the stinky house. It wasn't long before he couldn't take it anymore and resigned. His departure made my daily life a lot easier, not seeing him every day was a relief I hadn't expected. It had been two quiet, peaceful months since I had settled into my new life and small apartment in the city center. My days were filled with the normalcy of work, occasional lunches with colleagues, and evenings that I could now call my own. It felt like I was finally getting back to myself, the air around me lighter, my mornings brighter. But, like a shadow from the past, my phone rang one afternoon. The screen flashed Martha's name, dragging with it the weight of old, unpleasant memories. I hesitated but answered, curious despite myself. Anna, you need to help us. Martha's voice came through, strained and desperate. It was so different from the last time we spoke, filled with accusations and anger. What's wrong, Martha? I asked, though a part of me already wanted to hang up. It's this house. It's falling apart. The smell is unbearable, and we can't even use the bathrooms properly because of the sewage issues. Mike's drowning in debt because of the repairs, she explained, her voice cracking. I paused, taking in her words. The schadenfreude was tempting, but I pushed it aside. Martha, Mike chose that house. He refused a proper inspection. What did you expect? But, Anna, we didn't know. His girlfriend left him, and Jen, she's gone too, ran off with some guy, leaving her son behind. We're struggling. She continued, pleading now. I sighed, the old anger and frustration stirring in my chest. Martha, Mike made his decision without thinking of the consequences. You all supported him then. I'm sorry, but you're on your own. I hung up before she could say anything else, cutting off the last thread that connected me to that part of my life. As I set my phone down, a wave of emotions washed over me. Pity, relief, liberation, it was a mix that left me both saddened and strangely empowered. I had moved on, literally and metaphorically. My new apartment, though smaller, was mine alone. I decorated it to my taste, filled it with plants, and every corner of it was stamped with my presence, my independence. That evening, I stepped out onto my small balcony, overlooking the bustling city streets. The air was crisp, and the city lights flickered like distant stars. It was my city, my life. I had fought hard for this peace, and I intended to enjoy every bit of it. Never again, I whispered to myself, a promise hanging in the cool air. Never again will I let anyone control my life. I turned back inside, 
feeling the solid ground of my decisions beneath my feet. The apartment was quiet, a sanctuary from the world and its chaos. It was a fresh start, a new chapter that I was writing on my own terms.